For those of you who are taking thesis seminar, I wanted to show you a little bit about Google Forms. I think this is going to be a good option for you, uh, those of you who are going to be applying a questionnaire, and especially since most of your students and teachers are going to be uh, connected, uh, it's going to be a good idea, I think, to try to use some sort of online service so that you can uh, avoid having to capture uh, all of this information uh, manually. So if you think the context is, um, is one that your participants are going to have a connection to the internet, uh, this is going to be one of your best options. There are other services out there, but I'll talk today about Google Forms. I think this is, again, uh, very easy to set up and I think will suit most of your needs. So once you go into your own Google Drive with your own account, your own uh, Gmail account, I would go to More, Google Forms, and Template. And from here you can choose your own template, one that uh, is visually appealing, one that you select. I think you can also modify some of these uh, if, you, if you wish. But I have one set up already that I'm going to go ahead and open up. So if you look at this example, I wanted to give you uh, some suggestions about setting up specific sections for your uh, questionnaire. And again, this is going to apply to most of you, and um, regardless of uh, your research questions. I would begin with a, an introduction section, and in this section I would introduce yourself and your study. This is going to be a very brief introduction, but you can say who you are. You're a student here at the university, and you're doing a, a thesis, a research project, don't try, don't try not to reveal too much about your study. Keep it very general, but I think uh, having a separate section uh, for your introduction uh, would be helpful. In the second section, I would call it informed consent form, and this is going to be very similar to the informed consent form that many of you are using for your teachers. Let's assume that this is going to be for, um, for students. You can copy and paste many of the parts of the informed consent form from uh, the samples that we that you've been provided and bring those into your online questionnaire. So I would bring that information into this section and I would include one section where it actually prompts the participant or the students in many of your cases to either agree to participate in the study or to not uh, agree to participate. So you could have some prompt here, you could have a test item that says something like, uh, please answer the following, or you could do, you could just ask a question, do you agree to participate in the study? And then you could have here, yes, I agree to participate, something like this, or no, no, I do not, no, I do not want to participate. Something like this, or I choose not to participate, however you want to word it. But uh, I would do a test item where they choose one or the other. I would then have a section called personal information. So you'll have the person's name, maybe the experience, just to, if this is for a teacher, for uh, a student, you would include any personal information that you think is relevant for your study. And then the fourth section I would have, I, I would give a title. This is going to be your actual survey or your questionnaire. And I would give it some sort of title. Again, try not to reveal too much about your study, but of course, create a title that is relevant to the type of information that you're asking for. So once you go into each one of these sections, if you're not familiar with Google Forms, you'll notice you've got this sidebar that allows you to add different types of information. So if you had a question, for example, you're going to have a multitude of types of questions to choose from. So you can choose which is most appropriate for you. And you can also include additional titles or descriptions if that's appropriate. You can include images, videos, and additional sections. When you create a form the first time, you're going to be given 
the uh, the first section one section automatically so you'll have to add a section and this is the icon that you'll use to add this the additional sections this is the icon that I use to add these three additional sections for this example that I'm sharing with you here today um, so just to give you an idea what this looks like and you'll notice here in the in the questionnaire section I added a uh, for Likert scale, this is really a good option, a very easy option. If you go to add a uh, question, in fact, let me select one here and I'll show you. If I want to add a question, I'm going to choose linear scale. So linear scale will give you this option where you can include the range or the labels as, I've, that, as I have them here. I'm going to use a, a scale of 1 to 5. You can increase this, you can change this however you wish. For Likert scales, it's always good to have an odd number, but by default, you'll have five different options here. Now, a good feature or a nice uh, feature when you're adding, um, you're adding information, you're adding different types of items to your questionnaire is this duplicate feature. So here, I just clicked on duplicate and it just copied it. And I can just now just change the, the question and everything else stays the same so this is this makes it very quick and easy to add additional questions as you go along now let's take a look at uh, the finished product here and you'll see if you select this option preview okay you'll have each section in turn and they'll create uh, these questions and your participants can go through here and answer them accordingly. Okay, so this is what it looks like again. For Likert scales, these are really a, a nice and easy option to set up online. So this is what your questionnaire is gonna look like on a mobile device on a cell phone. So they'll open it up on a browser. You'll provide the link uh, beforehand and you'll see here as we go through each of the sections, this is what it's going to look like and they should be able to complete the uh, questionnaire th using their phone. So here, you know, I can put my name, right, and then I can go down and choose experience that I have and so on, right? So this is what it looks like, again, on a cell phone, and uh, you can, as you see here, it's uh, quite user-friendly, fairly straightforward for your participants to go ahead and fill out online. So try this out. If you want me to look at your uh, questionnaires, I would recommend that you go into Google Forums, share the document with me using my Gmail account, my Gmail address, and I can then go in and leave comments and take a look at your work. Of course, if you have any questions, you can come by my office. We can look at it and discuss it as well. So if you have any questions, again, let me know. And I think, again, using a, an online platform like Google Forums, especially for your questionnaires, is going to be the way to, to go, given uh, the fact that most students have access. Of course, if they don't have access to the internet and uh, you still might be able to use Google Forms and then print it out. The main thing is that it looks presentable, that you, you have these sections that we've talked about here today and everything looks, uh, again, it looks, uh, it looks nice, it looks organized, it looks professional. All right, so let me know if you have any questions or issues about uh, getting around Google Forms or any other platform that you're going to use. And uh, let me know if you want me to take a look at your questionnaire.